Hey, I'm Mr Bison. I've been a maths teacher for the last 10 years. And as you probably know, today the exam boards have published what they call the advanced information for the summer 2022 exams. Now, what these are going to do is they're going to give us a bit of a clue about what should be coming up. Now, before we go into this in more detail, you can't get your hopes up because unfortunately, pretty much everything is being covered. So it doesn't mean that we can suddenly just ignore trigonometry, for example. Now, I was totally expecting this to happen. I knew the exam boards were going to put everything that was on the spec in there. But there still are some important things that we can learn from this, which I'll get into in just a little bit. Now, I've put all of the files and documents that I'm using in today's video into the Bison Maths Google Drive, which is linked in the description. And I'm actually going to be focusing on Edexcel. That's because that's what my students use as the exam board, and it's also the most popular exam board. But the things that I'm saying are going to be pretty true for all of them. The only thing that's going to be different is the actual content. So make sure that you go to your exam board and find the advanced information for what you should be looking for. So a few things I want to tell you about. Number one, this is intended as a way to aid your revision, not for you to completely avoid or not learn certain topics. The second thing is that this advanced information cannot be taken into the exam room with you. Thirdly, the topics that have been listed are not in question order, nor are they in difficulty order. The exam board have suggested that they're just in the order of the specification, but I'm not sure that that's that accurate either. Point four is that you're still going to be expected to answer what they call low tariff marks. This is like the one or two mark questions, and that could be from any part of the specification, whether it's been mentioned or not. Number five is synoptic questions. They're still going to be in there. Now, synoptic means that it can cover lots of different topics at the same time. So we do need to make sure that we're prepared for absolutely all of the course. And my sixth point is that the guidance actually suggests that students need to be prepared for what we call the unseen questions, which I usually call the curveball type questions. So they are still expecting you to think in these unfamiliar situations during the exam. So I just wanted to show you this document, which actually has the advanced information and I've collated it by chapter so that you can actually see um, from year one and year two, which parts are being mentioned and which parts aren't. Hopefully you can see that pretty much everything is being covered here. Um, I've tried to sort of organize it in a way that gives you a bit of an overview of what will be happening in paper one. So you can pause the video to have a look at it or look at it in my Google Drive. And here it is for paper two as well. OK, so I've got six points that I think are going to be useful about having the advanced information. Number one is you definitely know some topics that are going to be coming up in that first paper that you can be prepared for. So, for example, for Edexcel, there is a question on the factor theorem. You would be foolish to go into the exam not having revised the factor theorem and knowing what it is. Point two, there are some topics which are mentioned in paper two, but not mentioned in paper one. So this means that you can divide up your revision in a way that suits your priorities. So for example, they mentioned that there is binomial expansion in paper two, but it is not mentioned in paper one. So my bet is thinking it's just not going to be there at all. And that will give you a bit more headspace for your revision for paper one and paper two. Point three, there's a hint of the theme of some of the questions. So for example, they talk about explicitly knowing a to the power of x as a function. And I would make sure that I knew how to do everything with that from sketching it, graph transformations, integrating, differentiating, using it in modelling scenarios because you know for sure that it's going to be coming up. Point four, they don't mention modelling very much at all. They do say the use of functions in modelling and that's so broad it could cover so many different chapters which I've listed in the document that's in the Bison Maths Google Drive. Point five, some things aren't mentioned anywhere at all. For example, the sine rule, the cosine rule, area of sectors or arc length, but that doesn't mean that they won't be coming up at all. So you do need to make sure that you're prepared for the whole course. So my last point is kind of what should we take away from this? And I don't think it's that much of a game changer because you're still going to need to cover the whole course, although it is going to give you a hint about what to revise and when to revise it. At this stage, though, February time, you really should be focusing on revising the topics that you've got the weakest understanding and not honing in too much on what has been suggested in the advanced information. Moving on to stats and mechanics. This is not going to take long. Pretty much everything is mentioned. And so you do need to make sure that you know the whole course. I think the advantage with Pure is that you know what will be coming up in paper one and what will be coming up in paper two. But stats and mechanics, everything's going to happen in one place. The only thing I would say is I think for mechanics, where they mention about moments, I think it's more likely to be talking about ladders or things that are angled because it talks about resolving forces and friction. So that means I think I'm going to be spending less time with my students looking at the horizontal beams or the seesaws. That's also in line with what all of the past papers have been so far they've all featured ladders or angled things rather than horizontal ones so that's the gamble i think that i'll be taking so in terms of preparation for your exams let me know what you would find helpful in the comments i've been updating my exam questions topics which are in the bison maths google drive so that they now contain the 2019 and 2020 papers so these should be really really helpful if that's the kind of thing you'd like me to go through under the topics that have been suggested in the advanced information let me know and that's the kind of thing that i can work on over the next few weeks before your exams if there's anything that you think i've missed 
about this advanced information, I would love to know. So please put it in a comment because I'm sure that other students would like to read what you think as well. Okay, my last point about exams for 2022 is about grade boundaries. Now you may have seen this in the news that they've said the grade boundaries are going to be set at the midpoint of 2019 exams and the 2021 teacher assessed grades. I'm not clear what that's going to look like in practice if it's actually going to be a midpoint of things. Um, but what is clear is that the grade boundaries are going to be more generous than they were in 2019, which is a good thing. Last of all, I hit 10,000 subscribers and 1 million views this week. So a big thank you to everybody who has supported my channel. Um, this started as a project back in October 2019 for my year 13 students, and I never expected other students to want to see my teaching. And a special shout out to Hisham who planted the idea in my head back in October 2019. Thanks, Hisham. So do make sure that you're subscribed for all my upcoming videos. My channel has got something for all kinds of math students at A-level. There's big revision videos, there's in-depth tutorials, and if you're looking for like shorter kinds of videos, go to my TikTok or my Instagram page where I've got some like micro revision videos that could be useful for you too. So go and follow me on everything that I'm on. Good luck with your revision and thanks for the 10k.